All right, so in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to give you an overview of the data path for your application. Now, we're gonna to touch on a lot of things in this video that we're gonna come back to in the future. So this is like the 10,000 foot view. Uh, please don't get nervous that you don't understand everything here. We're kind of taking like a, a, a full sweep through a lot of the code that you're gonna end up using as part of this project. And so there are things that we're not gonna stop and talk about in detail because you know you have about 10, 15 minutes to do this, right? But I wanted to give you a sense of kind of exactly what steps are involved for getting data from your server to the screen, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and run the app uh, as, as we talk, right? And so, so here's the question that we're trying to address. And this is always a good thing whenever you work on a project to, you know, in, in dig into stuff like this. Like there is data being displayed on the screen. Where did it come from, right? Where is the data? So when I run the app and it's gonna take a minute to load and build because it's Android Studio and it's kind of slow. Um, but when I run the app, what I'm gonna see is a list of restaurants in the Shambana area um, that are displayed on the screen. And so the question is why? Like where did this data come from? How did it get to the, the main activity, how did it get onto the screen and why is it the way it is? So those are the questions that we're gonna ask. And in many ways, we're really gonna spend a lot of uh, our work on the MP over the next, you know, uh, the remainder of the semester answering these questions, right? So again, please don't freak out if some of this stuff doesn't make sense and I gloss over certain details right now. We'll come back and we'll dig into each little part of this process when you need to know things and when you need to make changes. But right now, I'm just trying to give you an overview. Uh, today's programming task is like pretty light. So I thought it was a good chance to just give you, and we're just getting started still. So I thought it was a great chance to just give you an overview of exactly what happens, right? I cannot believe this is taking so long. Okay, um, there we go. I was about to say, I'm almost out of things to say. Vamping complete. All right, so starts up, I see a list of restaurants. So where is this? Okay, let me show you. So the list of restaurants itself is, I open up source main, I'm in the project view like I usually am, source main resources restaurants.csv. And you're welcome to install this plugin if you want to, uh, but this is a CSV file. So this is one way of representing data as a string, which is, is a series of comma separated values. We've worked with CSV data on homework problems in the past. Um, and so what's in here? So there are four fields in the CSV file. There's a unique ID that we've assigned to each restaurant, a name, a cuisine value, and the restaurant's website if it has one. And some fields are missing. Not every um, entry has all these fields. What is that first field? What's that ID? Why can't we just use the name of the restaurant? Well, it probably wouldn't surprise you if I told you that there are something like eight or seven Subway restaurants in the area. And so frequently when we work with data, we assign data values kind of a random, unique identifier uh, so that we, this is the same thing we do with people. This is why you have a university ID number, right? We can't just rely on your name because there may be another student that has your name. And so we need to give you some universal uh, identifier that we know is unique. Here we're using something called a UUID. But you can think of this as just a big random value. Then the next field is the name, then the cuisine. You see different types of food here, Mexican, sushi, sandwich shop, Korean. There's only like, I don't know, 30 values, I think, in the, in the data set. Um, but this gives you a sense of what type of food the restaurant serves. And then the restaurant's website, if they have it. Um, okay, so this is the data that is eventually making its way to the screen of your app. And our job here is to try to understand like how this happens. So I pointed out before that your app actually has two different parts. And you can really think of these two different parts as two different computer programs that are talking to each other, that are communicating with each other. This is how modern apps work. And pretty much every app, whether it's running on your phone, on your laptop, on your desktop, the phone apps that you use spend pretty much all their time as you're running communicating with computers that are running in the cloud. But you can really think of that as just, just another computer. It's another program running on another computer. And the way that they talk to each other is by exchanging messages using this amazing computer network that we build called the internet that spans the entire globe. So for example, 
when you uh, access your email on your phone. Let's say you delete a message. What really happens is your phone sends a message to the server and says, please delete this message. And the server says, okay, right? There's probably a unique ID assigned to the message that the client uses to tell the server which message to delete, right? Let's say you're playing a song. You select a song from the list and your phone downloads the data required to play the song, the actual data that constitutes the audio that's gonna be played into your ears from the server. So there's this constant exchange of information and this constant communication. And you can really think of these two devices as talking to each other, right? Now, how they exchange data is a much more computery type thing, but really what they're doing is they're sending data back and forth all the time. So this is data that the server has. The next question we have to figure out in our app is how does the client get it? So the first thing to look at is what does the server do with this information? How is this restaurants.csv file used by the server? And if I go up and I open up my server code, what you're going to find is that there's this load restaurants method that's defined at the top level. And what this does is it goes through that list of restaurants and it uh, it opens it up and reads it all into into a string and this is pro there's probably a better way to do this in Kotlin actually but I left the version in here that's similar to what we do in Java um, and then it uses a library to go through the CSV one record at a time and it creates these JSON nodes um, and then it uses uh, this library called Jackson to then convert that into a string. Um, and that's used, so where is this called? So one cool thing you can do in Android Studio that's pretty helpful is I can say, uh, go to declaration or usages, and you'll see that, there, that these, this is used by the test suites in various places, but it's also called right here. So when the instance of the server is created, one of the things it does during startup is it initializes this restaurants JSON property, which is a string by calling load restaurants. And so load restaurants takes that CSV, converts it into a different serialization format called JSON that we're gonna talk about, um, that we have been talking about, and then it saves it into the string value. But this is just a string. Then what happens is when uh, the client requests this information, the server passes back this list of restaurants. And so let's actually go ahead, I'm gonna add a little init block here. Uh, and I'm going to put a call to println, and all I want to do is print off this uh, restaurant's JSON. Um, and so I'll rerun the app, and I'm going to open up my logcat tab. And when this restarts, what you'll see is a long list of uh, JSON values that are loaded by the, and I have to turn off main activity, I don't want to filter on here. Uh, and let's see, there it is. Okay, so you'll see now in my window, I can see this list of information about the, the restaurants. And one of the things you'll note that we are gonna need to fix is that there are only two fields that are displayed here, just the ID and the name. What about the cuisine? What about the website? What if we need that information? How do we do this? And we'll come back to this, right? Because we are gonna need to pull more of that data out of the CSV file and make it available to the client. We actually have to do that pretty soon. But for now, you'll see that this is JSON, right? Uh, we've shown you JSON. This is a JSON array. So this is a list of JSON objects. Every object here has an ID and a name field, and these are pulled directly from that CSV file. Okay, so we really still have to answer the question of how do they get to the client? So the server is one program, and the client is a different program. And so to exchange data, they have to communicate. Now, to do this, we're gonna use something. The server is gonna expose data to the client using something called the HTTP protocol. This is a very common protocol. It's the protocol you use to access the web. Every time you go to a website, you are exchanging data with the server using this hypertext transfer protocol, the HTTP protocol. It's essentially what we built the web on top of. And it allows a client, usually a web browser, but really any type of device, to make a request to a server to retrieve some content. And essentially the server passes back a string. That string could be any type of data that the client, uh, you know, that the server might provide. In this case, the server is exposing this information. Um, let me uh, minimize this again on this route called slash restaurants. And so we're going to, we're going to talk about this more later. Again, don't freak out. You know, I can already people feel people getting nervous. It's like, oh gosh, I'm supposed to understand all this code. Nope. We will go through it when we need to. We're going to zoom in and look at various components in more detail as we go along. But the idea here is that the server makes this data available in a particular way. It says, I'm gonna call this data this, 
And if you make a request for it, I'll send you back the JSON string that has the list of all the restaurants that I pulled out of the CSV file and some information about them. So where does the client get this information? So now we're going to go up into the main activity um, because this must somehow be happening in the main activity because when the main activity loads, it somehow acquires a list of restaurants. And where that's happening is right here. So when the main activity starts, it calls this method called client.getRestaurants. And again, I'm going to go ahead and double click on this and go to declaration or usages. This is a method in client.kt. And we will write some more code like this later in the project. But what this does is it makes a, so this is one part of your code. This is your client. So it needs to make a request to the server. Normally the server would be in the cloud somewhere. What it does is it and the server have agreed on what to call this particular request, right? Essentially, when I request slash restaurants from the server, this is a URL it looks very similar to the ones that you type into the address bar on your web browser. What the server is going to send back is this list of restaurants in JSON. And then the client's going to do something cool. It's going to deserialize this into a list of restaurant objects. And so if I look at my model over here in models.kt, this restaurant model, right now it's configured to pull a couple fields out of that JSON. Um, but some of the cool heavy lifting here is going to be done by this library that we use called Jackson, right? Um, and so Jackson is going to take that string and it's going to perform deserialization, which we'll talk more about, um, to convert that into a list of restaurants. Um, and then this is passed back to the um, to the main activity using a, uh, an idea called a callback, which again, we'll talk about more later. So many forward references in this video, I know, but I'm trying to give you sort of the 10,000 foot view. Now I go back to the main activity and for fun, let's print off uh, our restaurant list in here so we can kind of see the full uh, picture. So we saw how the server acquired the restaurant JSON string by parsing the CSV file. Now we're going to look at the other part of this communication, which is the client. The client has now asked the server, hey, give me all the restaurants you know about. The server responds uh, with this information. And now if I look down here at the very bottom, you'll see I have this list of restaurant, restaurant, restaurant. Now these don't print off very nicely. We could fix that by adding a two string method to our restaurant class. And that actually might be something you want to do to aid with your debugging. We talked about in the past how adding two string methods can be really useful uh, for the purposes of debugging. But this is how the data gets from place to place. Okay, before we wrap up, I want to ask another question. And this is a this is a question that is aiming at your task for today, which we will cover in a little bit more detail um, in the next video. We'll talk about kind of how to run the test suites and everything and how to zero in on exactly uh, what you need to do for um, today's uh, checkpoint, right? Or today's test suite that we're going to work on. Um, so the next question, and these are always good questions to ask when you're a computer scientist like, and you're starting to work with some unfamiliar code, ask questions and try to find the answers. That'll really help you understand why things are the way they are, because there's always a reason, all right? The next question is, why are the restaurants in the order that they're in displayed on the screen? Why aren't they in some other order? This order seems really random. It's like El Toro's first, but then Maya's at the station isn't there, and you know, what's going on? So if we go back to our restaurants at CSV file, you'll notice that the restaurants are in the same order as they appear in the CSV file. And so this is why. The, Server sends back the list in this order and the client displays it in this order. Now, we're using a library to display this list of restaurants. And that library allows us to tell it how to sort things. So I'm gonna open up adapters.kt. This is normally not code that you need to understand, but I do wanna show you that when I create this sorted list adapter, I pass it what's called a comparator. Now, we're going to talk about this more in the next video where we zero on, on, in on exactly what you need to do. But a comparator is sort of like comparable, except rather than being implemented on a class, it takes two instances of the same class and it provides one approach to sorting. them. We talked about comparable. There was like a canonical way of sorting things. With comparable, it's one way of sorting things. And this comparator is called sort by name. But this comparator doesn't do anything useful right now. It just returns zero. And in fact, there's a warning here because the parameters that are passed to it are not being used. And so what we're going to do is we're going to fix this 
so that it actually does what its name implies. It's supposed to, it's, it's supposed to sort the restaurants by their name. Right now it just returns zero, and so what happens is the list library tries to sort the list of restaurants, but they just end up back in the same order that they came from, which was in the restaurants.csv file. So we'll come back to this and we will fix this. Okay, but now let's kind of go, uh, go through this one more time, kind of start to finish. So where is the data that's on the screen? The data is in this CSV file that's part of your project. How does the client get that data? Well, the first thing that has to happen is the server has to load it, which happens right here in load restaurant. So the server takes the CSV file and converts it into a JSON string. The server then will send that JSON string to any client that requests a particular route from the server, which is slash restaurants. That's the HTTP protocol. Um, and, and that's actually done by this dispatch method, by this dispatch method, and by this method, get restaurants. Okay, now I'm gonna go over to my client. How does the, so I'm going kind of one step at a time up from where the data came from to now the server has it. The server is gonna send it to anyone who requests restaurants. Who makes the request to restaurants? The code in client.kt. It makes that request, and then when the request comes back, it performs the step of deserializing that list into a list of restaurant objects. Who makes the call to get restaurants? The main activity in onCreate. So this is kind of what happens. So there's really two things happening simultaneously when your app starts up. One thing is the server parses that uh, list of restaurants and gets ready to respond to requests for it. The other thing is that the client starts up and when the client uh, gets ready and the onCreate method is called, it requests that information from the server. The server responds. When the server responds, it uses that to populate the list that's on the screen. And then that list is sorted in this unhelpful way that we're about to fix in just a second. Okay, so there it is, right? From, from start to finish, this 10,000 foot view. Let me emphasize one more time before I'm done. We will come back and talk about everything that we just discussed. This is just a taste, just an overview. This is really a high level kind of end-to-end -end description. And we're gonna come back and we're gonna dig into pretty much every part of this process from the server code to working with more data, which you'll do in the future, to writing new client methods, which you'll do. So you'll have a chance to extend and to mimic and to you know, get you know, your hands dirty with all of the different pieces of this. But so don't think that this is it, like somehow you're expected to go on and, and, and make these big changes. We'll guide you along the way. But what I wanted to do is try to connect the dots, right? Just get you from the data on the CSV file to the pixels that are being shown on the screen and why, they, why the screen looks the way it does.